Happy Funland is a game with good ideas and flawed execution. I went into this game expecting it to be a horror, but it became clear very early on that it was going to be something else as well. What is this? Oh my god. <laughs> it's somewhat unique in that it's a first person horror that leans heavily into comedy elements, not a genre you play every day. They have port. They do have port. <laughs> The game takes place in an abandoned theme park in a swamp in Florida that clearly parodies Disneyland, Mickey Mouse and Walt Disney himself. The nameless and voiceless protagonist you play as is sent in to explore it by a stranger who was willing to pay you to do so. Before I began my journey in the theme park however, I was immediately disappointed by the options the game provided. I'm used to games defaulting to snap turning but I thought that we were all on the same page with regards to options like smooth turning, yet there was none. The only thing I could change was the degree to which I snapped and a vignette toggle. Omissions like this were disappointing back on the PS4 1 back in 2016, but now in 2024 they're almost shocking. In terms of visuals, the game holds up fairly well until you look at mid to far ranges, at which point there is quite a bit of shimmering going on. It's less of an issue in the interior sections, but in the open, more wide spaces, it's noticeable and made me wish the developers took advantage of the dynamic foveated rendering like in fellow Unreal Engine game Cube VR which just released last week. Still, I found myself impressed with the environments themselves and the art direction. Every area I explored felt dense and packed with details, from fireflies buzzing around to merchandise stacked on every shelf to posters and cutouts of fictional cartoon characters that convincingly mimic the style of early Disney characters but with their own dark twist. What really impressed me was how much of the stuff laying around was interactable. You can smash glass panes, lights, merchandise, collectibles and much more which helped make those things feel less like set dressing and more real and believable. Although many of the interactions themselves were less detailed, for example when you're opening doors or pulling levers, it isn't done by actually grabbing them but instead you're just touching them with your hand and then they automatically complete the animation which some may find disappointing and not too much different from just pushing a button. Your time in Happy Funland will be spent exploring the dilapidated theme park, engaging in combat with animatronics and doing some light problem solving. In terms of exploration, the areas are fairly linear and the only reward you'll get for checking out every nook and cranny will be the collectible Randy Rodent figurines, of which there are 80 in total. You'll be given a flashlight to aid in your exploration, but as this game never really takes advantage of the deep blacks offered by the PSVR 2's HDR OLED display, you'll never really need to use it. Sometimes you'll come across a locked door or obstacle to overcome and solving it may be as easy as just finding a key laying around or as annoying as making a putt in a mini golf course. I say annoying because the physics for this golf mini game are not exactly on par, pardon the pun, with walkabout mini golf with the ball often acting in inexplicable ways or clipping through the environment entirely. It's a shame because it's a fun idea on paper and they went to the effort of adding 9 holes for you to play throughout the game, but the reality is frustrating. When you explore enough or unlock a certain door, you'll often spawn in enemies. These enemies are animatronics come to life and gone haywire, their only function now just to kill you. While I enjoyed the design of these enemies and the one-liners they spew out, the actual combat itself is very dull. They sprint at you in a straight line and you'll take damage if they get close enough. Sometimes they'll do an attack animation, sometimes they just run at you, sometimes they just stand there seemingly not aware that you're there or they get stuck on something. You can use your putter from the mini golf or a replica sword if you found one to repeatedly bash them until their heads explode in slow motion. I didn't notice any combat tutorial so maybe I was doing something wrong but basically I just waggled my controller around like it was a Wiimote and I hit the enemies like 60 times or something before they actually died but it got old very fast, even though their death explosions were always entertaining. The only other method of defeating enemies that I found was luring them into moving rides which would instantly destroy them. Speaking of the rides, it wouldn't be a theme park if you couldn't enjoy the rides and these I found entertaining. They're not breakneck speed like something in Until Dawn Rush of Blood, but they are varied and helped prevent things from getting too stale. From a trippy drug infused ride, to a haunted house ride that made my brain very confused, to a pirate themed shootout on the water, I always look forward to these segments of the game. 
I beat Happy Funland in one sitting in just under three hours with 66 collectibles out of 80 total. I'm not someone who would let the length of a game be a determining factor personally. However, I understand that some people do take time into consideration weighing this against the price, which in this case is $25 and €25, Euro, which may feel too steep for some. But even without taking the short length into consideration, there's enough wrong here to make me hesitate recommending it as it is right now. The dull combat and the lack of basic options do a good enough job of that on their own, even if the ride can sometimes be fun.